Greetings Earthlings, it's Joe from BuildAssetsOnline.com and today I want to talk about how to deal with customer returns when you're doing high ticket drop shipping. The first thing I want to say is don't panic. We have some people emailing us, uh, some students are asking us questions. Uh, how do I deal with returns? Like I'm afraid to even get started uh, because I don't know, I don't know how returns work. Like what if someone returns everything? Don't panic, it's okay. Uh, a lot of people get worked up over problems that they don't even have yet, and uh, that's not a good thing. Perfect, like I like to say, is that perfection is the enemy of done. So when you have to deal returns, you'll deal with them, but don't worry about them before you have to deal with them. Now, secondly, returns aren't a huge deal because, first of all, they're a very, very small percent of your orders, and second of all, you have a return policy. So it's your store. You can make your return policy whatever you want. And obviously you're gonna make your return policy in a way that doesn't hurt your business, hurts it very, very slightly, but benefits it because customers like your return policy is very favorable to them, or maybe even makes you a little bit of money at the end of the day. Uh, we take a, tip, a different approach for all of our stores depending on what the, what the supplier is, what the brand is. Sorry, my eyebrow edges. Um, so let's talk about how, how to set your return policy. Now, once you secure a bunch of supplier relationships, you're gonna notice that all of them have different return policies. So all you have to do is figure out if a customer returns something from this supplier, what happens? Usually there's something called a restocking fee. So say there's a 15% restocking fee, the customer has to pay, well, you'd only, you'd only refund them 85% of their order once they got the item back, or once the supplier got the item back. So you would put on your returns and refund, re refunds page, um, we have a 10% restocking fee, or you can even break it out by brand and say, this brand has a 10% restocking fee, this brand has a 20% restocking fee, uh, customer is responsible for shipping the item back. Now, if the supplier messes up and sends a like the wrong product or something broken to the customer, that is a totally different scenario. That's not like a buyer's remorse return or something like that. That is when that is the supplier is accountable for that and they have to ship out a new one and if the customer has to ship something back they should be able to provide a free shipping label for that customer so that's two totally different scenarios you don't want to hold your customers accountable um, for when the supplier messes up or they get the wrong item or something now many people are used to shopping on Amazon and when I tell them about a restocking fee they're like uh, no one's gonna buy from me because I have a restocking fee but this this is actually it's wrong for two reasons uh, first reason is that many items on Amazon actually have a restocking fee and it's not the items usually sold by Amazon it's the ones by third-party sellers a lot of stuff that Amazon doesn't sell uh, usually higher ticket stuff actually on Amazon will have a restocking fee and Wayfair the last time I checked their return policy they had a restocking fee for certain items. I think they, they actually broke it down by category. They obviously have too many brands to break it down by brand. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a common thing in, in online business because returns cost money. Um, so yeah, you could say your return policy to whatever you want and obviously do it in a way that makes strategic sense to you and, and your specific business. So you'll obviously have to find out what the uh, what the policy is for the supplier that you're working with and this is not something you have to ask right away when you call them up you're like hey uh, before we work together what's your return policy just as the relationship progresses you know you're in with them you've sent in all the forms and you start uh, developing a relationship with that supplier you can call up your rep or whoever your account manager is and say oh just curious what's the what's the return policy and some people will even some suppliers will even send you it up front in the uh, in, in the documents so I mean it's it really is a, a simple thing um, we uh, so returns are gonna be a very very low percentage of your orders um, because we have more stores now where we have a lot of different sales like happening every day and when I say sales I don't mean like stuff is on sale I just mean like a lot of sales are coming in obviously the total amount of returns we get is a bit higher um, we didn't do this well, what I'm about to tell you, we didn't do this for like our whole time, drop shipping, like three to four years now, but now we actually have like a really small warehouse space that we pay like $30 a month for, um, where we just, 
if a return comes, we can get it sent there. Um, it's actually like a storage unit. So if it goes to the front of the, we can have it sent to the front of the, uh, like the front desk and they'll put it in our space or depending on what we ask, they'll just bring it back. We'll just be able to go pick it up. So, I mean, that's about it. You don't, you guys don't have to worry about that uh, right now, if, especially if you don't even have a store up or if you only have one store up. Um, that's when you're making millions of sales every year and you're gonna have like a little bit more returns to deal with just because that's naturally what happens. But I mean, that's that's a good problem to have, isn't it? So yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for this one, guys. I really hope it was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great weekend.